Okay, hello everyone, it is your boy back at it again. And today we are going to explore something which I think is a little bit of an underrated topic. <clears throat> Uh, no one really talks about this side of things. Everybody is rather ideological about th things these, these days. And um, buzzwords just get thrown around a lot. Um, fascist this, uh, Nazi that, whatever. So let's actually look at something a little deeper. Economics. Because I believe fascism always starts with economics. And um, after reading things like Road to Serfdom, I really start to value the power of just economic policy and how it eventually ties into totalitarianism. So, like I said, it all starts with the economics. First, certain economic policies are brought into place. We will talk about what they are a little bit later. And then this often leads to mass amounts of destitute. And then once destitute is there, uh, the surveillance and things like that slip in. And this is usually where the liberties go away fully. To hear more about this topic, uh, watch my previous video, please uh, give your boy support. And um, yeah, after uh, mass surveillance kicks in and liberties are basically gone, this is when legislation like you cannot form any pol op opposing political parties come into play. And um, if you look at these countries, this is roughly where they are at this point. Um, in places like the UK, destitute is starting to exist and it's genuinely starting to take over. Now, that place has really fallen like hell. A lot London Bridge is falling down people. How more like London is falling down walls. All right. Um, Singapore, you, know, you guys kind of know about this. And China, I mean, I, I don't need to say any more. So now what really is fascism? Now, again, there are many definitions for it. And um, the truth be told, this is really a buzzword. So we're not going to focus on this word at all. In fact, I don't want to use this word anymore in the video at all. Because like, what does it even mean? It's a little bit like leftist. Like, what does left even mean anymore? What does right even mean? Um, everything has become, uh, labels are pointless. Um, I must mostly just look at what kind of policies people support. I just stick them at that. So one thing I think is really bad is just centralization. This is what allows um, individual prosperity to basically be destroyed. Quote unquote fascism, or let's just say centralization instead, is when the collective is valued more than the individual. Now, this word is often, again, this is a buzzword, right? Collectivism, communism, things like that. But roughly you get what I mean. The group matters more than the people in the group. And when this is implemented in harsher scales, you see things like the loss of individual prosperity, but the increase of group prosperity. So this is where animal farm comes into play. You have a rich farm, right? A rich group, but people in the group are pretty damn poor, except for a few really big ones. And the idea is, oh, these guys are rich. So that means the nation is rich, which means we are technically rich as well, even though that is not the case. So again, the individual and everything about the individual just goes to shit. Liberty and control as well. The state is very big, right? Um, the state controls all the land, all of the land, the state has a good economy, the state has a lot of machinery, technology, and all this quote-unquote good stuff. But the individual doesn't have access to anything. The state has control, and the state has liberty, but the individual does not have any of it at all. So basically, everything for the individual goes down, but the collective, it goes up. Now, let's look at what collective really means. Because it sounds kind of like a good thing. It's like, whoa, whoa, hang on, like the whole group is going to get better? Isn't that a good thing? So what's wrong with that? Well, usually what collectivism means, it really means the nation. And what the nation really means is it means one party, right? So again, this is where collective narcissism comes into play. Your life is shit, but you are part of a good group, right? And that group is very rich. It is very powerful. It is very your life is shit, but because the group is going good, or at least a few members in the group are going good, you get collective narcissism and all of your concerns essentially get dismissed. And this is why collectivism is has become a buzzword. Because when they say this, they don't actually mean like the good of everybody. They mean the good of a few people, but they want you to associate the good of everybody with the good of that few people. This is how language kind of works. This is what Inksog is. You see, Inksog is the whole of Oceania. It, it is Inksog. Without Inksog, there really is Nothing, if you think about it. The people don't mean anything at all. Only Inksog does. And what is Inksog? It's basically like the few people in the inner party. So there was this thing called the inner party in 1984. And it comprised about like 
of five, four to six billion people. And then these guys basically control like half of the world. You should look at the, the George Orwell map. And so this is obfuscating this entire thing is extremely important because when people are like, oh yeah, um, I do it for the country. What does for the country mean? Again, Edward Snowden. For the country usually means for the party, for the political party in power. And again, if you look at places like China, I would argue China doesn't even exist anymore because the CCP just controls everything. China is the CCP. Now, even if you look at something like Singapore, there is no Singapore. Singapore is just the PAP. Even if you look at things like the UK, sadly enough, it's really sad to see European countries following this track. We thought after the Enlightenment they would be better, but no. In the UK, yes, you have two political parties. I think it's called Labour and like Tories or whatever the fuck. But at the end of the day, they really support the same shit. Like they are the same and they control virtually everything in the UK. They own all the infrastructure. They, I mean, in a place like Singapore, they really own everything. They own all of the land and all of the housing and all of the media and all of the infrastructure. And the UK is also getting to that point. And this is essentially what it comes down to. The party is more than the people, but the party is the nation and the nation is the people. You get what I'm saying, gang? So basically, all in all, this is the most important thing in in quote-unquote fascism again it's a buzzword right but what i have described here i think virtually all of us can admit it's horrible because when these things happen you get a lot of inequality and what do i mean by inequality um i understand some people are like oh equality is a bad thing anyway why, why is it important the reason i say equality is important and again i don't mean this from a leftist lens by equality, I mean generally, th generally things like freedom, the freedom to start your own business, the freedom to criticize something, the freedom to practice your own religion and things of that nature. That is what I quote unquote mean by equality. I mean equality of, to some extent, rights. And yes, I do think to some extent equality is necessary because like I said, large amounts of centralization is what caused regimes like the CCP. It's what caused regimes like Singapore. It's what caused regimes like the Soviet Union, like Nazism. And now we're going to get into the economics. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to make like a leftist point or a rightist point or a Tory point or whatever. But sometimes, yes, uh, certain things are necessary for societies to be free. And now we are going to go to what I think is the main um, enemy of virtually all tyrants. Uh, tyrants is not a buzzword, right? Uh, people say fascist in instead. So I'm going to say the word tyrant. Competition is something that is really bad for anyone who wants to maintain power over a large amount of population. And competition is bad because it allows people to basically have agency over their own life. Competition leads to individual prosperity. When people can freely compete, it means anyone can compete, anyone can work hard, and people can, yes, get ahead of each other, but they can also live well. Again, competition doesn't necessarily mean one person's victory destroys another person's gain. The point is, with competition, people have opportunities. That is what it really is about. And if you want to control an entire nation, you cannot let people have opportunities. So no small businesses. Now, the Nazis did this by basically passing a law that literally forbade the formation of new businesses above a certain amount. I think it was like 200,000. So anything about like $200,000, I think. I don't think dollars was the currency, but some around here any business smaller than this was not allowed to be formed and i think every business below forty thousand had to be destroyed all right um i'll put like a screenshot of this from somewhere and this basically destroyed like one fifth of the economy one fifth of people from the economy uh, just lost their shit because of this legislation their businesses were just gone and what this essentially does is it forms more cartels and more monopolies because now the market is literally freed up. Why is the market freed up? Because people are literally destroyed from inside it by legislation like this. And now um, corporations that are a little bit big, they can just expand out even more and conquer more of the market or they can collude and they can occupy more of the market. And another thing in the Nazi regime, again, economics is very important. It's something a lot of people always forget. They say Nazi and then they say, oh, like six million people, which don't get me wrong, that is fucking horrible. But at the same time, you have to look at the economic roots the economic start in which all of that shit happened. I'll talk about this person later. You should know who he is, by the way. And so cartels and monopolies, right? Um, all of these businesses were essentially forced to form cartels. This is another thing Germany did during the Nazi regime. They forced people into these cartels. Yes, the Germans, um, the Nazis, essentially praised private property. This is true, but at the same time, they did not praise individual prosperity. So again, the, the legislation is really muddy, right? Um, uh, tyranny and things like fascism, quote-unquote, are not as 
uh, clear cut. I mean, this is literally politics. This is literally language. But the outcomes they achieve, again, like I said before, centralization. If you want a buzzword, that's what this is, centralization. And so another thing that can happen, now we see this in modern times, is intellectual property increases. Patents in the US have actually gotten steadily and steadily more restrictive. Intellectual property in the US has genuinely gone out of hand. And Milton Friedman, again, this person was, Milton Friedman was a quote unquote conservative, if you want to put a label or a buzzword on him. Um, he even supported things like colonization, right? Like that's how conservative he was. Yeah, now I don't agree with everything Milton Friedman says, but even someone like Milton Friedman, who was a conservative. He is championed by many conservatives. Even he warned of the instability of patents and how they could limit competition to great extents and cause massive amounts of centralization. And now we'll talk about an extremely modern example. Uh, I mean, this, I'll get to this later. This is mean. So everything I want to do is illegal. Again, this is not this. Okay, this, the, this title of this, the title of this book is to do with farming. You can see the farmer here and how the government is legit, like blowing his shit up, right? This book, Everything I Want to Do is Illegal, is about how farming and small farms are destroyed by legislation. Uh, so things like, oh, um, you can only use large machinery to make cheese. You're not allowed to make cheese in your sink because of hygiene. Now, this is an example of the legislation mentioned in the book. And another thing Germany did is Germany also went, went after small farms during the Nazi regime because this is another really great way to destroy competition because farming for most of the time is perfect competition. I mean, a potato is the same fucking thing, right? So if you want to destroy competition, why not go after industries like this as well? And of course, let's talk about the meme example, the example everybody likes, haha, -ha, right? Another form of legislation you can use, uh, weirdly enough, Joel Salatin talks about this point as well. Again, Joel Salatin, I would not consider him a leftist by any means or a conservative either. Again, like I said, labels are really dumb because everybody has their own nuanced views. Actually scratch that, a lot of people are just binary these days. Haha, -ha, if you know what I mean. But for lack of a better word, as you start reading more complex literature, you will understand that people, whether it's Joel Salatin, F.A. Hayek, Milton Friedman, it's not as one-dimensional. You can't just slap labels onto people. There's a reason they write books explaining things, right? You can't just slap one thing on it. They will do things like they will make cannabis illegal, okay? But fentanyl, they'll keep that legal. And the reason I'm saying this, again, this is a meme point, but the idea is things everybody can make, they will make that illegal. Again, farming, any, virtually any, Again, farming. Virtually anyone can do farming, right? So what they'll do is they'll say, okay, we'll make this much harder to do. And then again, we, like anyone can grow that shit. So we're just gonna make it illegal. But fentanyl, on the other hand, requires sophisticated machinery and chemistry to produce. You can't just grow it. And so this is legal, but the plant is illegal. Why? Because the plant is accessible. Farming, illegal. But like automobile companies or whatever, which um, happened a lot during the Nazi regime, along with military, all of that is legal. In fact, they focus efforts on militarization but farming and stuff, they just destroy that completely. Why? Because anyone can do it. In the very end, you have a choice of being a worker or basically nothing. Very few people are the owners. This reduces a number, centralization, and everybody either gets forced into this. You cannot have moderation. Now, this guy right here. By worker, I really mean surf, road to surfdom. That is eventually what ends up happening. If you look at a place like Singapore, you cannot own a house, you cannot uh, oppose political party, you cannot do politics. I don't know how to spell that, fuck. You get the point, you can't do politics. And essentially what ends up happening is, in a place like Singapore, if you wanna look at a modern example, everything is a shopping mall with a franchise store in it. So you'll have like McDonald's or whatever the fuck, and you'll have like Burger King or whatever, right? There are very few to zero small independently owned shops, Very no farms. Uh, very few small businesses and the small businesses you see is basically a fucking coffee cart on the road because again individual prosperity is gone and centralization exists a lot and i think if you read books like road to serfdom and again f.a hayek this man has a lot of thoughts and opinions as well of course but i consider this guy a political thinker yes this guy um he had many ideologies but at the end of the day the reason i respect this guy a lot is because he really spoke about freedom and he spoke about it in an economic context, which is something everybody forgets. Discrimination is something virtually everybody knows about these days, right? Everybody knows about quote unquote racism or something like that. But yeah, we all hear buzzwords like that all the time. But one thing that is very important behind all of it is the economics. 
and how centralization essentially ends up happening and ruining everybody's lives. And that is what he spoke about a lot in Road to Serfdom, which is why I think everybody should read that, or at least read certain chapters from it at least. Um, why the Worst Get to the Top, my by far my favorite chapter. And um, yeah, so this is my video about it. And the point, the main point of this video is I wish people would start looking at actual points as opposed to labels. Um, as you can see, I spoke about that a lot in this video. Because every time I bring up a name of somebody, whether it's Joel Slotin, F.A. Hayek, Milton Friedman, whoever, right? The first thing people think is, what label is that person? Is that person on my team or is that person on the enemy team? And in reality is, there, there aren't necessarily teams per se. Again, these people, Joel Slotin and all these people, they are very complex. There's a reason they have written books, right? If you want, and in order to understand their views, you need to read the book and you kind of need, need to think about it a little bit. Again, stop thinking in teams. This is not a fucking sports uh, match or whatever. Think in terms of points and think in terms of what society you want to live in. All right, all right. Thanks for your time and have a nice day.